Identity is a very important concept in philosophy and in logic, but it's also a difficult concept to understand. And we were talking here, and Mark suggested that we do a short presentation and discussion on the concept of identity to accompany the symbolic logic section on identity in the in the course. And maybe so I could learn it better. There's, there's stuff in there that still confuses me. Oh, it's and I don't mind expressing that while I'm on film. That's okay. Well, it's true for me too. Yeah, okay. And philosophers have wrestled with identity for forever. It's a con very difficult concept. So let's begin as uh, philosophers often do by distinguishing some things. There's two different senses of the term identity. Uh, sometimes, well, do you have a black pen? You don't have a no, black but, pen, do you? No. But uh, it might be in that Mark has a coffee cup and I have a coffee cup and our coffee cups look exactly alike. Okay. And someone might say, Paul, your coffee cup is identical to Mark's. And what they would mean, of course, is our cups look alike. We call that type of identity qual qualitative identity. Two things are qualitatively identical if they have the same qualities, essentially. Like identical twins with a couple Identical brothers. twins yeah. would be an example yeah. of qualitative identity. Yeah. Two quarters minted in Denver in 1975 in mint condition. I would not be able to tell a difference. Okay, good two. example. Two mint condition quarters I, and minted in Denver in 1975. Why did you pick Denver? Uh, just because a lot of coins are minted in Denver and have that D on it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if they look exactly alike, we, we might say they're qualitatively identical. But they're still two different coins. Right. And our coffee cups, even though they look identical, uh, they're qualitatively identical, they're still two different cups. And then in philosophy, we have another sense of identity. We sometimes use the term identity uh, in this way. Uh, your example of Samuel Clemens. Samuel Clemens is identical to Mark Twain. And you guys know that both these guys wrote Huckleberry Finn, but they're one and the same person. It's not that they just look alike, they're one and the same person. Mark Twain is uh, Samuel Clemens. The morning star is the evening star. An evening star is the planet Venus. It's like three names for the same thing. So those things would be numerically identical. So that's what we call quantitative identity or numerical identity. Mark Twain is Samuel Clemens. That We call that the is of uh, quantitative, quantitative identity. So we were talking about this example and our, our videographer Dwight over there, he popped up that factoid that today is the uh, 101st anniversary of the death of Mark Twain. Too sad. What? He died on this day in 1910, April 22nd, huh? Yeah. So, uh, well, so anyway, yeah. So, so let's say Mark Twain is identical with Sam Clemens, and when we when we use identity in the quantitative sense, we mean that Mark Twain and Samuel Clement. Clemens are not two different people, they're one and the same person. The qualitative sense. The, or excuse me, quantitative, in quantitative sense. sense. <clears throat> and we would symbolize this. We let a small case M, of course we're using small case letters to to serve as individual constants, so they always abbreviate singular terms. Singular terms always identify or pick out or specify one specifically identified object or thing. So we'll let the small case M stand for Mark Twain. We'll let the small case S stand for Samuel Clemens. So M stands for a, is an individual constant standing for a proper name. S is an individual constant standing for a proper name, as you know. And then the is of identity is symbolized with an equal sign in logic. So the equal sign in logic, as you know, does not mean the same as the equal sign in math. It just means it, it represents the is of identity, the quantitative is, the quantitative identity. This says that Mark Twain is identical with Samuel Clemens, meaning they're one and the same person, not two different persons. How's that? 
Whereas with Mark's coffee cup and my coffee cup, if we say they're identical, we mean they look alike, but they're still two different cups. Now, the concept of identity is used in philosophy in many ways. Um, here's two important claims in philosophy of mind. Uh, some philosophers claim that your mind and your brain are one and the same thing, not two different things. They identify the mind and the brain. And that view is called the identity theory in the philosophy of mind. So let's, sit, let's let V represent Mark's brain. Pretty accurate pre pictorial presentation. Actually, this is not working out well. For, very, for reasons that will emerge, okay. let's let A stand for Mark's brain, Okay. and let's let B stand for Mark's mind. And the identity theory claims that Mark's brain is identical with Mark's mind, or they're one and the same thing, in other words, not mm -hmm. two different things. That's called the identity theory. It's a version of uh, materialism in philosophy, the view that everything is made of matter. PM could have worked. <laughs> This works too. Okay. So, <clears throat> and then there's another view that says that identifies your mind with uh, something we, that's called the soul. So, some people, some philosophers might argue that the mind and the soul are identical, not the mind and the brain. So, let's let M stand for Mark's mind, and let's let S stand for Mark's soul. And some philosophers argue that each of us has an individual soul that's a non-material entity and that our mind is identical with the soul. And so we would symbolize that claim this way. These two claims contradict each other. This is a version of materialism, the view that everything's made of matter. This is a version of what we call dualism, the view that the world divides into matter and non-matter. Two different kind, radically different kinds of things. Do you have any comments on this? Well, so far, so good. Um, it, the translations of identity statements get challenging pretty fast. They do. And we'll look at translations uh, uh, later. And they get confusing. Yeah. Um, but it is a symbol that does show up in a number of contexts. It's worth yeah. at least getting an introduction to it. And there are common examples of identity. Most people know that Bob Dylan is identical with Robert Zimmerman, that they're one and the same person. Most people know that Muhammad Ali is identical with Cassius Clay. How would you write um, George Carlin is not George Bush? There's going to be more okay. than one way of doing it. Let's yeah. say George Carlin is not George Bush. Okay. So if I let G stand for George Carlin and B stand for George Bush, and I want to say they're not one and the same person, okay. I will. I'll say they're one and the same person, entity, and then here I'll say no, no, they're not. Okay. If I if I want to say it is false that George Bush is not, um, George Carlin is not George Bush. It is false that George Bush is not George Carlin. Okay. I want to do that. Okay. So if I want to deny that yeah. it's it, deny that they're not the same person. So, so double negation works exactly the way it has in the past. Yeah. So that's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> so good luck with identity.